Hi, are you preparing for your study visa to Canada and you're wondering how best to write your statement of purpose to make sure you get your study visa approved within a short time? Guess what? I was in similar shoes a few months back and I got my study visa approved within a month. So join me as I share with you a winning statement of purpose so you can get that study visa approved in a short time. Welcome back. First off, my name is Nkem and I'm so, so happy to have you here. If you're my returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for also leaving your comments in the comment section and also making this community so, so interactive. And so if you're new to this channel, welcome, welcome. Yes, you're welcome to Nkem Space. Here I share content on self-development and currently sharing my immigration journey to Canada. Most of these ideas are largely from my own experience and research done on the IRCC website. So each time I put up a video, I'll always attach appropriate links to the IRCC website on my description box. These ideas are completely free. So be sure to subscribe to Care Space, join the community. Also put your comments in the comment section below so we know where you're at in your own journey. With that said, let's go to the video. So to me, a statement of purpose is like telling your story to the immigration officer attending to your own package. So it's like putting your best foot forward when making an application. On the IRCC website, this document is similar to what they call the letter of explanation. So what this letter seeks to achieve is to explain to the immigration officer your goals, why you chose to study in Canada, and if you understand your responsibilities as a student here in Canada. So let's go straight to the document itself. So the statement of purpose can be looked at from two lenses, what you write and how you write it. So when it comes to what to write, you're looking at the number of pages, the areas of concern you want to cover, the font size, the font type, every other thing that has to do with what you're writing. And then when it comes to how you're writing, you're looking at how you arrange these areas or paragraphs and how you present your words and the tone of language you use generally. So I would advise that you keep your statement of purpose short, sweet and simple. The reason why you want to keep it short, sweet and simple is because the officer probably has other applications to look through. So he can look through it easily and identify the key areas that are of concern to him. So for the font style, size and spacing, I advise you go for official standards such as Arial or Times New Roman. You can also use size 10 or 11 depending on your own choice. And then for the line spacing, I advise you go with 1.5. Now let's talk about paragraphing. So for the paragraphs, I would advise that each paragraph should actually talk about an idea it wants to flesh out. For instance, a paragraph can talk about your motivation, your educational background and your experience. Another paragraph can talk about your financial bandwidth. Another paragraph can talk about why you chose to study in Canada, why you chose to study in your school. Another paragraph can talk about your home ties. So arranging it in such manner can help direct the officer to go to the particular paragraph where he seeks more clarifications. Now, let's go to the sample of today, my own statement of purpose. So for this part of the video, I'll be looking down on my laptop screen here. I have my statement of purpose opened right here. It's two pages long and it is made up of seven paragraphs. So let me start with a brief introduction. My statement of purpose is quite unique to me and my field. So make sure that yours is as unique to you as possible. So let me start with my first paragraph. I am passionate about finance and business development. My life experience, desire to extend my knowledge and solve complex business challenges have motivated me to pursue an MBA at Ivy Business School, DLI number. So what I have on my first paragraph is an introduction to who I am, that is the industry I am currently in, what motivates me to actually pursue the MBA program that I have chosen to take. And then I included my university full name and the DLI number. So now I've started the introduction this way, I can now go to further details in my second paragraph. Coming from a family of four, I have learned to nurture and take care of people and environment around me, especially as I watch similar efforts from my parents daily to provide for our family. At a very tender age, I resolve to always be at my best and pursue advancements in my career. This drive has built me over the years. Although studying economics in both my bachelor's and master's degree have instilled in me qualities required for my current job, my appetite is today sharpened by my current role and supply chain experience as a business analyst in Company A, relationship manager at Bank B, and research assistant at University C. 
During this period, I have developed keen interest in strategic planning and commercial business development. In my first year at Company A, I developed a model used to calculate the cost of goods sold for all stockkeeping units and brands across the nine plants in the country using activity-based costing approach. I am currently working on improving the global transfer prices as it affects Nigeria and other export customers. These projects are well received and I partner with international specialists and colleagues. However, there are still some defining gaps that pursuing this IB MBA fills in my career. I lack some depth when it comes to understanding the uniqueness of different business types, as well as getting a broader view on the diverse areas of business analysis. As a tenacious learner, I believe in the importance of constant improvement as well as giving back to my economy, as these are major avenues to attaining financial freedom and national economic growth. So this is a mouthful. Like I said, my own SOP is unique to my own experience and my industry. So you want to write your statement of purpose tailored to your own industry and use the terms that you use in your industry. So in the second paragraph, I talked about my motivation, my drive, my educational background. So because I already had a bachelor's and a master's degree, I needed to write that they have actually helped me in my journey so far, but I need this new degree, that's the MBA degree, to now improve on what I currently have. So if you have other degrees, there's no need to actually shy away from writing about them. You can include them, but obviously, there are ways to always improve yourself. And if you think that this new degree you're about to get is an added advantage to you, then you put it as the icing on the cake and tell them why you actually need it. So towards the end of my second paragraph, I also described that I have some gaps that I need to fill that this new degree would actually help me fill them. So you want to make sure that you include descriptions like this to help you buttress your points why you need that other degree. So now giving more information about myself, my motivation, my educational background, and my experience, we will now go to the third paragraph. So for this third paragraph, I call it the hook. In my own opinion, this is the best place to actually write about your financial bandwidth. The reason is, by the time the officer has looked through your first paragraph and your second paragraph, he's probably wondering if you can actually pay for your school fee, pay for your living expense, and every other thing that is required. So it would be great for you to put your financial prowess down here on the third paragraph. It's quite a short paragraph, but let's go through what I wrote. I have made a deposit of S Canadian dollars in my tuition fees, a personal savings of S Canadian dollars, and a money market investment fund of S Canadian dollars, a scholarship of S Canadian dollars from my school, Ivy Business School, and a pre approved grant of S Canadian dollars based on my strong candidacy of academic merit and demonstrated leadership. This makes a total mix of S Canadian dollars available to me during my study as shown on my proof of funds document. So what I basically did was a summary of what I already have on my proof of funds document, which I have a beautiful video on this channel where I talked about how to raise your proof of funds and how to arrange it to the immigration officer looking through your package. So if you have not seen that video, click on this link to go straight to that video so you can get more information on how to do this document well. So in this third paragraph, I just gave a summary of what I already have there. So the immigration officer can actually know that everything that has to do with financial support is highlighted here on the document and also shown properly on the proof of funds document. So now we've talked about the third paragraph, which is the financial support paragraph. This brings us to the fourth paragraph. So now the fourth paragraph, I call it the humane part of your letter. So this is the place you would like to address your volunteering work, any free work or any free experience you've gotten, any awards you've gotten, this is a good place to write about it. So let me go through what I wrote in mind. During my work experience, I volunteered in two noteworthy community services. The first is a full day long medical outreach organized by my banking school set in conjunction with Live Well Initiative in Nigeria. We held this outreach in an open market in Ogba, Ikeja, Lagos, conducting free medical screening covering hepatitis, HIV tests, as well as creating awareness on the need for regular medical checkups for better productivity. The second activity was a year-long voluntary visit to secondary schools by my club 
in local villages to hold talks centered on career choices, sex education, as well as distributing sanitary products to female students. I also voluntarily prepared students for the West African Senior Secondary Examination in the subjects Economics and Mathematics after school. These are activities that I am passionate about and I have a few pictures and an award of excellence as I held the position of Finance Secretary of the club. So now we've talked about the humane side, the other activities that you are passionate about. These activities are very important to highlight because volunteering experience here in Canada is also as important. So for instance, if you're in Nigeria and you've done the NYSC program, during the program you're probably in a club or a society that has done one or two community services, this is the right place to write about that experience. So now we've talked about the humane side on your fourth paragraph, you can naturally now go to the fifth paragraph talking about your goals. So here's what I wrote. Post MBA, my immediate career goal is to be a commercial business analyst in a global firm. This experience with an MBA program will kickstart a rewarding career of serving as an international trade expert in the long run. As such, an Ivy MBA program is the best step in the right direction for me. Firstly, the comprehensive professional resources that Ivy Career Services offer will aid me in better identifying planning and executing career-related strategies based on the inclination of my skills and interests. Secondly, Ivy MBA case-based curriculum customized to suit an action-oriented and dynamic approach is reflective of current business trends. The distinctive blend of integrated cross-functional and experiential learning across a broad spectrum of business management disciplines would provide a broader understanding of applicable approaches in the field of business and drive original provocative business thinking. Finally, exposure to Ivy's wealth of 26,000 strong alumni network, staff and access to the Connect with our students platform, leveraging on opportunities such as the International Exchange Program and International Study Trip would significantly avail me with lifelong learning and mutually beneficial relationships. So this is just information about my school. I think around the time I was applying, I went through my school website. I went, I spoke to different people. Yes, I did the networking bit, which is the one I told you about in my previous video where I talked about how to apply to schools, the networking part. So if you haven't seen that video, also click on this link to take you straight to that video. It's so important that you do the networking bit so you can also relate with what people have told you and what's on the website to your own situation. So on this fifth paragraph, I basically talked about my short-term goals, my long-term goals, and how the Ivy MBA fits into these goals. I also talked about why I chose to study in Ivy. So it's also answering that question of why do you choose to study in the school you're also applying for. So that's all about the fifth paragraph. Now we've talked about why we chose the school. It would be natural for you to now talk about why you chose Canada. So this brings me to the sixth paragraph. So let me read what I have here. I wrote, studying in Canada would create better opportunities to harness and develop my skills which are limited in my comfort zone. As a young woman from a developing country, I hope to demonstrate that girls can achieve much more if they set their hearts and passions to it. As a richly diversified economy, studying in Canada would give me a sense of understanding and more appreciation for different approaches to getting things done in the business space as well as exposure to diverse mindsets and cultures. Furthermore, given the robust infrastructure and amenities, I would have better access to resources that would improve my productivity. A study visa would enable me to pursue my educational development goals and avail me this unique opportunity to enhance my skills more appropriately. So now this is just the sixth paragraph talking about why you chose to study in Canada. So for this part, you can also look at how Canada is going to be playing a major role in the degree you've chosen. So on my own statement of purpose, I talked about how I needed opportunities to see diverse thinking, diverse cultures, understand diverse business ideas. And that's why I chose Canada because in Canada, there are a lot of cultures present here in Canada. So you can also put your own description to fit into why you actually chose to come to Canada. And then finally, the seventh paragraph. On this seventh paragraph, I call it the tie-in. I call this the tie-in because this is where you're going to be describing your home ties and any other information that you think the officer should be aware of. 
So in my own case, I had applied for permanent residency about five months back. And so I needed to make sure that the officer knows that I do have a permanent residency application here and that I am aware of my situation. We call that the dual intent situation. So let me just read what I have here. I apply for the express entry part under the Federal Skilled Workers Scheme and I understand the dual intent conditions of my application. As much as I am excited and looking forward to giving back to the community, I am also dedicated to leave Canada at the end of my program if my permanent residency application is not approved. The MBA after graduation would give me an edge when applying for employment opportunities back in my home country. Given the cordial and rewarding relationship I have with my current employer and considering the two important projects I've engaged in within the past year, I stand the chance of being re-employed or to any other employer within the industry. So I also added my own personal information that were like my home ties. So this is a good paragraph to address it. So for instance, other home ties can be if you have a family business that you're going back to, to you know, take over from your parents, that's a good home tie to include. If you have like commercial landed property where you're going to set up businesses, that's a good home tie to include. So if you have your close family members like your wife and your children back at home, that's also another good home tie. So you can also add all those home ties to this part. So remember, on this seventh paragraph, you're going to be explaining that you understand your situation as a student and your responsibilities thereof. And if you finish your study and you graduate, you're going back to your home country to put those tools and those skills you've learned from the degree back into use in your home country. So this is a good place to actually address those home ties. And then towards the end, I added that I had attached my medicals, my biometrics, my IELTS results, my police clearance certificates, educational documents, employment documents, because I had already done this on my PR, so I just felt like, oh, I've also attached all those documents. And then I ended the letter saying, thank you for giving me your valuable time to process my study visa application. Sincerely, my name. So now we've come to the end of this video. I hope you had an amazing time going through my statement of purpose. Please remember to use your own words, your own experience to tell your own story. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also leave your comments in the comment section and I'll be happy to respond. Thank you so much and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!